Hello, welcome back to another edition of The Lead. I'm your host, Cody Johnson, and today we're going to be taking a look at what Kenyon Green brings to the Houston Texans. Let's get into it. So before we get into the film, uh, I wanted to touch on, you know, I think some people believe that the Kenyon Green pick was a little bit of a reach. Um, in my opinion, I think he was actually the, the guy that Casario wanted. Uh, we heard during the draft that they, the Texans had another chance to trade down. I believe it was to like pick 20 with Pittsburgh. Uh, but they decided not to because, because they felt that Kenyon Green wasn't going to be available at that pick. So they decided to stay at 15 and, and make the pick. And then we heard later in the draft that actually, uh, the Chargers actually like, were very interested in Kenyon Green. So that kind of coincides with the fact that they didn't want to trade down because they didn't think he was available. They were thinking the Chargers were going to pick him. So, the fact that they went with him at 15, even though some people see it as a reach, I think he was their guy. And, you know, some people are going to kind of complain about, you know, we passed up on Kyle Hamilton or um, or Jordan Davis, which I really like those guys as well. But I think they found they thought there was more value in the trade back than there was in those players. And, you know, I can't I can't blame them. Though that trade back allowed us to trade up for two players in, on day two and Christian Harris and John Mechie. So for me, I, I give this pick an A just to give it a grade which grades don't really matter, but I give it an A. Um, and I believe, again, I think he was their guy. So he's a guy, to me, that I think is going to be a great left guard starter for you for seven-plus years. Okay, so let's get into the film here. So Kenny Green lined up at left guard here, and I think he's just a mauler. I think he's going to fit the perfect the, the power gap scheme that Pep Hamilton presumably is going to run, the, the scheme he ran back in Indianapolis. I think he's going to fit it perfectly. Number 70 here is 6'3", 330 pounds. Kenyon Green gets under his pads and, and just drives him off the ball. Just drives him and creates a running lane for the cutback, right? Just absolutely un perfect, perfect leverage here. Driving him back creates a, a lane for the running back. So uh, I think he's going to fit that power scheme perfectly again. This play here, I think it, it, it was more of a zone concept, but I want to show you his get off, how how. how Quickly, he beats the defensive lineman here. Crosses face immediately and gets under the pads and then just starts driving this dude back. Another lane created for the running back. So in the run game, I think it's going to be – he's a very good run blocker. Uh, his concerns come in the passing game, but as you can see on these two plays, I think he's a very good run blocker. He drives defensive lineman back. I think he's got – he's versatile enough. Uh, scheme versatile enough to be able to play in a power gap scheme, or if we switch to his zone, eventually he can run that too, and you're not going to have a problem, as A&M ran a lot of zones. So, so again, another guy that's just a guy that, honestly, we've been missing since we, like, uh, Brandon Brooks walked, uh, an interior offensive lineman that is going to blow people off the ball. So, this play here uh, shows, you know, I, his, he had some lack of athleticism uh, with his combine testing and stuff like that. Um, I think that's going to come into play when if he plays tackle, which I don't think he will, but if he plays tackle, I don't think he has enough athleticism to hang with the, the speed rushers off the edge. But I think he's got enough athleticism to, that you can pull him, which I think Pep is going to do a lot of, as you can see right here. He pulls, the edge comes to set, set the edge, and... Kenyon Green just gets over it, set, uh, seals the edge off, and lets the running back cut right off his butt to the sideline here. Sealed it off. Running back gets the lane, takes off, gets gets a good good yardage, uh, more than it would have been if, if he wasn't able to seal that off. So I think he's got that athleticism to, to make stuff like that happen. Uh, good play here from, from Kenyon Green. Now, again, to show his athleticism in the run game, I believe you can send him second level if you want. So he's going to go second level here, line up again at left guard. He's going to push up to this backside linebacker right here. He pushes up. So I would have liked to see him seal this off right here and just give that that uh, running back this lane. But he wasn't able to. The, the linebacker is pretty quick, so he came over the top. But Kenyon Green is able to redirect uh, and push him out of the play, giving – the cutback lane off Green's butt here for the running back. He's able to push him out of the play. He actually almost interrupts the safety here. Safety sees it quick enough and gets over the top, though, but almost blocks two guys right here, right? So we'll run that back one more time. 
again, left guard. I, again, the seal off that would have been great, but is able to redirect this guy and 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 get under get under his pads, push him out of the play, uh, almost interrupting the safety. So he's a guy that's athletic enough that you can send second level, push to the second level, and get a block on a linebacker. So this play here, I kind of just wanted to show you his effort um, on this play. He's lined up at left guard again right here, and he's going to get involved in three blocks right here. So the first block, he punches this interior defensive lineman, punches him here so this this tackle can get take over the block. You see it right there, the tackle's coming in on the block. And then Kenny Green moves over to the one tech and, and gets a hand on him so that the center can take him over. Right there, center is going to take him over, and then he's going to push over to this linebacker. Unfortunately, this play was blown up off the edge. Uh, the the puller couldn't get to the edge player quick enough, but just again, just to show your effort, he gets in on three blocks. That's great stuff. Uh, something you know, not a lot of linemen do. Uh, so, just wanted to add that play in here. So, let's get into bring really into his uh, pass blocking now. I think when he was playing guard, he was more than adequate as a pass blocker. I think some of his his mishaps, I guess we can call it, as a pass blocker came from when he's at tackle. Again, like I mentioned earlier, I don't think he was the guy that you wanted to put up against speed rushers and stuff like that. But at guard, with a guy to your left and to your right that can kind of help your technical issues, I think he was a lot better. As this game was in 2020 against Alabama, and we can, we can see here uh, some – Good pass blocking technique. This uh, was defensive tackle Mathis that was drafted in the second round of Washington this year. So, good base, good feet. He keeps his feet moving. His hands are inside, and he's underneath Mathis. So, push, keeps his feet moving. He gets his hands swatted right there, and then he's able to immediately get his hands back up into Mathis right there. So, you see just... Just good, good pass blocking. As the rest of this play, you know, the the, the pocket's starting to shrink a little bit. The edges are coming. Uh, Kenyon Green's over here on an island against Mathis and and is able to hold his own. So uh, I think again, more than adequate as as a pass blocker. But I also think he's really good at picking up stunts, which I cannot emphasize enough is going to be tremendous for the offensive line. If your center or your tackle can can trust you to pick up a stunt to pass off a stunt so he can take over the the, the looping pass rusher it's going to be tremendous again one of the biggest thing for offensive linemen is continuity so once these guys get playing with the, each other and then the center can pass off a, a block like he's going to here and then take the looper it's, it changes the game for offensive linemen so we're going to see here Kenyon Green got he's got the the three tech right here Ball is snapped. He sees that this offensive lineman is, or this defensive lineman isn't coming. So he, 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 you can see right here, he's already flipped his head to pick up this stunt right here. Center passes it off. He's under this, the one tech now. Center is able to go pick up the, the stunting three tech. Just great, great stuff. Uh, I, again, I can't emphasize it enough. The, being able to trust your offensive lineman teammates like that is going to be tremendous, tremendous. And then another stunt here, which this one was even more impressive because he kind of sees it a little bit later, but because this linebacker here is stunning from the, the wide uh, nine tech and it's coming all the way around, he's still able to find it at the last second, uh, and he's athletic enough to pick it up once it comes. See, so you saw he punched right there on the interior defensive lineman, comes off of it immediately and picks up this stunter and is able to hold him off. Great stuff, great stuff there from the uh, from Kenyon Green. Now this play here is kind of what I wanted to emphasize with him as a pass blocker. Um, he has a tendency he can overset for one. He can get over his pads and then lunge and get get handsy, heavy hands and hold defensive linemen. You're going to see that here. Ultimately, it's not going to uh, amount to anything on this play, but I just wanted to show you what his, some of his issues were. So right here, you can see he's over his pads, he's lunging, and then this defensive lineman is just going to throw him to the ground right here. Throws him off. Again, ultimately, that's it's not a big, big issue because this is a run play, but if this was a passing play and he's able to blow him off the ball like that, this is probably a sack. So, you know, 
I think again, not this isn't going to be an issue as much for him once he's solely inside as a left guard. Um, something that is he doesn't have to deal with speed rushers as much. He's going to be dealing with a lot more power than he is straight speed uh, or speed to power converts. So when he gets inside and he has a guy next to him on either side of him and he's able to deal with more power, I think this really isn't going to be that big of an issue. If it is, it's easy, it's fixable with good coaching. So. Just wanted to pinpoint what some of his issues were right there. So, again, uh, Kenyon Green, I really like the pick. I think he was their guy. Give this pick an A. Um, a guy, again, I think he's going to give you great uh, play at the left guard position for, for years to come. So, again, I he played a lot. He played all uh, four out of the five offensive line positions while he was at A&M, but I believe he's a guard, solely a guard in the NFL. And that's okay. That's not a knock. I, I, I don't. I think he can fill at left tackle in a pinch if someone goes down. But for me, I think if once you leave him at left guard and he's able to develop his skill set at left guard and his twitch at left guard, he, he's going to be perfectly fine. So again, really like the pick. Um, but that's going to be all for today. If you like the video, uh, leave a comment, hit the like button, and hit the subscribe button if you don't already. I'll get the Jalen Petrie video out soon, and y'all have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.